Pentecost, for those who don't know, next week is Pentecost. Pentecost is 50 days after the ascension of Christ. Whenever you hear the word pent, P-E-N-T, it means five, five or fifty. Um, the first five books of the Bible are known as the Torah. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy are known as the Torah. They are the law books that was given to Moses, but they are also known as the Pentateuch. The Pentateuch. Um, there is a famous five-sided building in America that houses the head of their military intelligence called the Pentagon um, in America. So whenever you hear five Pentecost, 50 days after the ascension of Christ, and, and as a church prepares for it, it's important. I, I know we're going to have a blessed time. If you haven't been filled yet, to anybody who has not been filled with the Holy Ghost, come next Sunday come next Sunday because what Jesus, the promise of Pentecost was, he says to them as he was leaving, he says, stay here and tarry here. And after a while, I will send the Comforter, the Holy Spirit. You'll see in the book of Acts, the Holy Spirit, the Comforter will come and rest on you. I'm gone, but there's another spirit that's going to come and rest, remain and abide on you. And that Pentecost, they, I'm not going to preach the Pentecost message today, it's the Sunday before, so I'm not going to preach that message, but that's what it is, about the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, so that he lives and he empowers us all as Christians to go through our lives. So we're going to get ready for our Pentecost Sunday next week. Amen. We thank God for that. Um, okay, if you have your Bibles, come with me to the book of Daniel chapter 10, um, and we're going to read a few verses there. And see what God has to say. I, I want to finish. I want the service to finish by the time you have to go, Michael. So I'm hoping that in an hour from now, church will be finished. Amen. Pray for me that I can I can minister in time. Amen. In a timely fashion, and um, and we'll have a blessed time, and we are able to go in an hour. All right. Let's do that. You know, every time a preacher says he's closing, he has to say that about five times before you actually get to the close. But uh, I'm not closing yet, this is just the beginning. <laughs> 
so um, help us. So Daniel chapter 10, you have it. Okay, let's, let's, let's read together. Um, and it reads this, Daniel chapter 10. Let me change my glasses because I can't see properly these ones. These are my, my long sight glasses. These are my short-sighted glasses. I'm both long-sighted and short-sighted, so help me. Yeah, that's better. Okay, so in, in, in the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a message was revealed to Daniel, whose name was called Belshazzar. The message was true, but the appointed time was long. And he understood the message and had understanding of the vision. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. Everybody say three full weeks. Three full weeks or 21 days. Everybody say 21 days. 21 days. Note that. He said, in those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks or 21 days. And verse 3 says, I ate no pleasant food, nor meat or wine came into my mouth, nor did I anoint myself at all till three whole weeks were passed. Now on the 24th day of the first month, as I was by the side of the great river that is the Tigris, I lifted up my eyes and behold, and looked and beheld a certain man clothed in linen, whose waist was girded with gold of Euphaz. His body was like beryl, his face was like the appearance of lightning, his eyes like torches of fire his arms and his feet like furnished bronze in color and the sound of all his words were like the voice of a multitude and I Daniel alone saw this vision for the men who were with me did not see the vision but a great terror fell upon them so that they fled to hide themselves verse 8 therefore I was left alone when I saw this great vision and no strength remained in me for my vigor was turned to frailty and I retained no strength. Yet I heard the sound of his words and while I heard the sound of his words, I was in a deep sleep on my face, prostrate, prostrate with my face to the ground. Suddenly a hand touched me, which made me tremble on my knees and on the palms of my hands. And he said to me, oh Daniel, man, greatly beloved, Understand the words that I speak to you and stand up, stand upright, for I have now been sent to you. While he was speaking this word to me, I was stood trembling. Then he said to me, do not fear, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard. And I have come because of your words. Everybody say, I have come. Because of your words. Your words are powerful. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me. Everybody say, how many days? 21 days. All right, remember that word? 21 days. But the, 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 the let me say that again because this is the crux of this. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me how many days? 21 days. Or three weeks. And behold, Michael was one of the chief princes come to help me, for I had been left alone there with the kings of Persia. Now I have come to make you understand what will happen to your people in the latter days, for the vision refers to many days yet to come. And when he had spoken such words to me, I turned my face towards the ground and became speechless. And suddenly one having the likeness of the sons of men touched my lips. Then I opened my mouth and spoke saying to him who stood before me, my Lord, because of my divisions, my sorrow have overwhelmed me and I have retained no strength. For how can this servant of the Lord talk with you, my Lord? As for me, no strength remains in me now, nor is any breath left in me. Turn your Bibles over to the New Testament and go to the book of James. It's towards the end if you have a physical Bible. If you have a digital Bible, just tap it in. James 4. James 4. And I'm just going to read two verses from James 4. Two verses from James 4, verses 2 and 3. If you have it, say amen. amen. If you don't, say wait. Have it. Okay. James 4, verse 2 and 3. You lost and you have not. 
you kill and you desire to have and cannot obtain. This is the King James Version. You fight and war, yet you have not, because you ask not. Verse 3, you ask and receive not, because you ask amiss, that you may consume it upon your lust. The Message Bible, the same passage of scripture, puts it like this. It says, you wouldn't think of just asking God for it, would you? And why not? Because you know you'd be asking for what you have no right to. Your spoiled children, each wanting your own way. Uh, your spoiled children, each wanting your own way. Everybody say, Amen. Amen. Father, we pray as we're about to go into your word that you will give me speech, words, not of eloquence, but from you, from the Holy Spirit. Lord, guide, lead, open every heart right now so that we are receptive to receive your word. We thank you right now. We bless you. Have your way, we pray. In Jesus' name, let the church say, Amen. Amen. This week, I got a cat. Uh, I don't know how many you got a cat or kid in your house. No one? Okay, I'm the only one. I got, I, you got a cat? Okay, I got a cat. Um, this week, I got a kitten. Uh, we got a kitten in the house, and um, uh, the kitten is, I was told by the breeder, that because it was the last kitten, it was used to sleeping with the owner in his bed or, or next to next to it and um and so when i got the kitten and we took it home um this kitten wouldn't sleep in his you know went out and bought all this stuff for it um <laughs> went into a store pets at home and went to bed and bought all the like, bed for the kitten and the scratch post and all this kind of stuff but try and make him comfortable and, and michael he doesn't want to sleep in his bed I even tried to put a, a, a cat, like treats, you know, little biscuits in there. He goes in there, eats the biscuits and comes back out again. Uh, he, he wouldn't stay in there because he was used to sleeping with somebody. He likes human touch and he was used to sleeping with human touch. And I had to, every time he did this, how many of you used to watch a program called Superman? Or, you remember this program? Um, and, um, and it reminded me of that every time he came to me, um, I would pick him up and put him back in his, in his bed. Um, and, and he was, eventually, he was trying, got the message that every time he came, I would put him back. In fact, he came out so many times that, uh, you have to pray for me, and I had this carry, you know, the, the carry box that you have for them, Stephanie, yes. and, you, and you can be locked, right? I have to put him in there and lock it. Okay, so that he stayed in there and slept so that he would uh, 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 be comfortable and get used to not sleeping with a human. Um, um, and it reminded me of children, <laughs> because uh, Super Nan uh, had this same issue, okay? Uh, when we ever watched the program, she used to go into people's homes and she used to help them with their children. Uh, she used to go in there and, and tell them, you can't have your child do that because if your child does that, your child's gonna grow bad and, and you, know, you won't be able to control that child when they get older. And, and so the same principles um, it, for, for a kitten was for a baby, if you like, or for a young child. And, and then it reminded me of us. Oh, help me. It reminded me of us. It, it, we have this same issue with God, that we are, are want things our own way. How, how, how many know that you want things your own way? Um, when I was a child, my mom said it. She said, I remember one time uh, Andrea was asking her, how was I, how was I as, a, as a baby? And, and my mum said, if it was up to him, I wouldn't get anything done. And, and basically what she meant was I was always in her, her hand. I was always on her, in her, she always had to pick me up and so forth. And so we sometimes become like children. We ask God for things because we want them, not because we want to do good with them. Help me somebody. Uh, uh, if, if, if you agree, say amen. amen. If it's you I'm talking about, just say ouch. <laughs> so, so, so let me go into the message. Um, as a Christian, um, there have been times in our lives, if you have been a Christian for any length of time, that God is silence. And, and the crux of my message today is when God doesn't speak. All right? When God doesn't speak. Turn around to your neighbor and say, neighbor, what do you do 
when God doesn't speak. If we are honest with ourselves, there are times that we have prayed to God for stuff and he hasn't come through. If we are absolutely honest. Um, we have asked for deliverance from certain situations, but yet we still find ourselves in that situation day after day. God deliver me from this job. It's getting on my last nerves, but you still have to keep going back to the job. Um, there are periods of time when we pray, but we just feel that heaven is silent. Um, there was a period for you, those of you who have studied your Bibles, that there is a period between the, the writing of the Old Testament and the writing of the New Testament. A period of 400 years when God doesn't speak. It is a period where no prophets are hearing from God. There are no um, words coming directly from heaven. There is no Elijah. There is no Daniel. There is no Elisha. Uh, there is no Moses. There is no one telling them what God is saying to them at that particular time. For 400 years, the children of Israel hear nothing from God. God is completely silent. He is not saying anything. But you can imagine that even in that time, God was preparing Israel for what was to come. Um, it is funny that sometimes, if we're honest, if God had given us everything we prayed for, we'd be in a different place right now. Maybe we would have forgotten about him. God, give me that lottery number. I'll help you, Lord. I know some of you played the lottery. Um, Lord, if we'd ever won it, where would we be right now? Ah, uh, help me, Lord. What would we be doing right now? And, and, and so, if we're honest, we thank God for the things that he didn't answer. Not for the prayers he did answer, but we thank him for some of the prayers he didn't answer. Let the church say, Amen. Amen. But God was present even in the times of silence. He was present. Quietly working behind the scenes. Uh, sometimes we find ourselves so frustrated by the silence that we feel discouraged. Sometimes it can feel painful. Um, um, Paul said this. He said, I have sought the Lord three times to remove this pain, this thorn in my flesh. But every time I pray to God, he said, my grace is sufficient to keep you. In other words, what he was saying was, I am not going to deliver you. There's certain things God will not deliver you from. As much as you pray to him, you have to stay through it to get what he's trying to do to you. Let the church say, Amen. amen. So here it is. Um, we cannot forget that God, despite the silence, he is still there. In fact, can I say to you that a silence of God is normally when we are in a period of transition. When you can't hear nothing from God, you're in a period of transition. In fact, it's not just a period of transition. I dare to say it's a period of elevation. God is getting ready to take you to the next level and sometimes he can't hold your hand all the way through. Let the church say amen. Uh, uh, we have... A generation that's different. I spoke about this um, some time ago. We have generations now that are different. I am Generation X, I believe. I'm Generation X. Um, and then you have um, um, uh, the, the, the one above me. I, 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 I'm not going to get myself in trouble, but uh, Sister Baba, I think the one above me is, is called the Boomers. They call the Boomer, the, the Boomer generation. And then the one above that is called the Silent Generation. That's where our mothers and our fathers fit in the silent generation. But the ones below, Minister Ben, is, 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 is the uh, millennials. Uh, uh, the millennials, and, and, and then we have now, what's the next one below that? Gen, 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 Gen Z, is that right? Gen Z. So you have the millennials and Gen Z. Uh, uh, and each of them have their different uh, ways of going about life. Uh, uh, sometimes it's difficult for, uh, for Gen X to communicate to Gen Z. Uh, and, and even my, my daughter is, is, is a millennial 
and, and even she says she had difficulty in communicating to Gen Z and they're just one generation below because we're talking different languages, we have different experiences. But what I'm trying to say is the old school brought us up different. Oh, help, help me Lord. The old school church, Minister Ben, brought us up different. Uh, 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 if you came in church and your skirt was too short, let me take, take you back to the, to the old time way. Uh, 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 if, you, if you came in church and, you, and your skirt was too short, they would pull you up right there and then. They wouldn't wait to the end of service and say, stop right here. Your shirt is too sharp. Don't come back in here with that. You know how, you know how I'm talking about? And, and, you, and you had to come back the next week. You could have been missing from church. Oh, I feel tired. I'm not going to church this morning. I, the boss got on my nerves this week. I need to... Oh, no, 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 no. That's not a church we came out of. But today, help me, Lord, help me. I, 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 people feel sick. I'm not even sick. But they're tired or, or they just can't be bothered to go to church. I'm not going to church today. You know, I could do something else. I'm going golf. I'm going gym. I'm doing whatever I want to do. But, oh, help me, Lord. If I was my mother in here right now, if I was my father in here right now, we would have a different style of worship. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, it wasn't even praise and worship. It was devotional service. Yeah. Oh, help me, Lord. The devotional service. And you took out the hymnal and you sang Psalm number 23. And you sing some, uh, verses 3, 4, and 7. And then Sister, Sister Johnson is going to pray. And then we sing verses 4, 5, and 8. And then Brother, Brother Sam is going to pray. And we had this kind of church. But that church seasoned us. It got us to where we are, that we are not easily swayed about with every to and fro of gospel and doctrine. It seasoned us. It put us in the church. It got us founded in the church. The church yesterday was different from the church today. But I hear that we have to go back to the old time way. Go back to a place where you can still take a licking and keep on ticking. Just because you got told off last week, you ain't coming back to church this week. The devil is a liar. You need rebuke to get to keep going. You need the rebuke. Somebody say amen. amen. Now you can't talk to nobody. You toss them too hard, they ain't coming back to church. Oh, help me, Lord. I, I'm a different kind of pastor. Help me. I, I don't want to. There's a different generation that we have to deal with now. So, 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 so what do you do? What do you do when God doesn't speak? What do you do? What do you do? What do you do when God doesn't speak? What do you do when you've been praying to him? And you're asking him for deliverance from certain things, but he's not saying anything. Um, um, Job, Job puts it like this. He says um, um, in, Job, in Job 23, um, verse 23, he says, Then Job answered and said, Even, uh, Job 23, verse 2, he says, Even today is my complaint bitter. You know about Job. Job went through stuff. He lost his, his whole family. He lost all his livestock. He lost everything in one day. And he said, even today is my complaint bitter. My stroke is heavier than my groaning. Oh, that I knew where I might find him. He's looking for God, that I, may, I might come even to his seat. Would I, I would order my cause before him and fill my mouth with arguments. I would know the words which he would answer me and understand what he would say unto me. Will he plead against me with his great power? No, but he would put strength in me. There the righteous might dispute with him. So should I be delivered forever from my, from my judge. Listen to this. Uh, verse 8, he said, Behold, I go forward and he is not there. I go backward and I can't perceive him. I'm on the left hand where he doth work, but I can't behold him. He hideth himself on my right hand that I cannot see him, but he knows the way that I take. And when he has tried me, I shall come forth as pure gold. There are situations in your life when you are seeking for God and it seems like God has hidden his face from you. Oh, but what Job was trying to say here, church, was that when you are going through times like this, when you are praying and asking God for deliverance and he is not coming through, what God is really trying to do is to test you. Oh, help us, Lord. He's trying to test you. He's trying to see, are you in this for me? Or are you in this for what you get out of me? Are you after the hand or are you after the heart? Oh, help me, Lord. Do you want from me or do you just want me? Ah, help me. He comes and Job says this now. He says, yet in verse 10, you know, excuse me. <clears throat> he says, yet you know the way that I take. And when he has tried me, 
I like the words that he used. Words are powerful. He says, when you have tried me, I shall come forth as pure gold. Do you know what gold has to do to come through as pure? Oh, no, Jesus. Gold has to be put in the refiner's fire. If you thought Christianity was a bed of roses, I came here this morning to wake you up and to tell you that you will not always have it your way in Christianity. You will not always have it your way in this journey. You're going to have to go through stuff when you're praying and you're crying and you are in pain and God does not deliver you because he's saying, I'm trying to grow you up. I'm trying to get you to be the focus of me. I'm trying to get you to realize that no, no, no matter if you can hear me or not, I am still there. Somebody say amen. amen. The refiner's fire, the refiner's fire is the pure, the process of refining gold is to take gold and to put it into a furnace and to heat it to at least 8,000 degrees. It is heated so hot that all the impurities of gold comes away. Uh, you, I, I don't know if you've ever watched all these old films or you've ever seen a documentary on gold. When they're, when they're hewing gold out of the rock or out of the ground, gold just like a diamond, it comes covered in mud. It comes covered in all kinds of stuff. It's a natural mineral, the most precious metal on the earth. And they try to, they, 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 they're hewing this out and it's covered in all of this dirt and, and earth and everything. And then they have to clean that off it first of all. They blast it and the diamond blast it and then they have to put it in this refiner's fire and they have the metal to get away all the dross. Now, now, when you are going through the fire, uh, I've heard this church, I'm, I'm here to encourage you this morning, because when you are going through the fire, what tends to happen is um, we tend to blame everybody else around us. Oh, when we go, oh, the church, oh, you know, I paid my tithe to the church, and when I was going through, I didn't get no money back from the church. Uh, this, this is not an insurance club. Let me just help you. It's not an insurance club. You, you, you don't pay into it and then claim when you, when you have a problem. That's not how it works. You are paying into God's kingdom. You are paying for the extension of his work here on earth. Hello, somebody. Can I help you? I've been there. I know. I've been not believe the things people come to and ask you for in church. Uh, we're, we're, I'm preaching to tens here right now. A few years ago, I was to thousands. And now, now when you go into the, 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 the office and people come to you and they and they, they come to you with their problems, and they come to you and they, they talk to you, you will not believe the kind of things people say. You will not believe the kind of things people believe the church should be doing. And you have to take them all the way back to the scripture and say, hello, this is what the money is for. This is what your offering is for. You are not laying up a treasure here on earth. You are laying up a treasure in heaven. And sometimes you can't wait until that plan comes through. So you want to cash out on that plan early. But if you cash out on the plan early, you might cash out on your soul early. Help me somebody. Stay in the plan. Stay in the plan. So here it is. Job says that when you have tried me, I shall come forth as pure gold. Let the church say amen. amen. I'm, I'm coming down. As believers, we know that we can always ask God for help. We know that prayer is powerful. This is the one thing that we know, the one thing that we do, almost a thing that sets us apart in terms of faith from other religions, we know that we have a God, if you like, that answers by fire. Somebody say amen. amen. So, in the book of Daniel, Daniel is having a vision in Daniel 10. He's having a vision, and the vision is about Greece and Persia, just in case you didn't know what Daniel 10 was about. It was a, a vision about Greece and Persia. It was a vision, as you read, was foretold. It was many days, many years ahead of his time. And he has this vision. The Bible says that Daniel prayed and fasted, not a complete fast, but he certainly abstained from some food. The Bible says he prayed and he abstained from meat and wine and so forth for 21 days. Everybody say 21 days. Uh, it, didn't Bishop Maddox say to form any habit, you have to do it for 21 days? Yeah. Right? 21 days. 21 days. Um, he prayed and he sought God for 21 days before God, he finally gets a message from God. 
And here's, here's the critical thing, church, that the angel spoke to Daniel and, and he says that from the first day you prayed, I heard you. God said, I heard you from the first day you prayed. But the prince of Persia, let me teach you about prince and principalities in areas. The prince of Persia withheld me for 21 days. Um, uh, the prince of Persia, many people in Pentecostal churches in, 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 in days, years gone by, um, they would use it as if this was the one territorial spirit that's ever out there. No, it was just the prince of over Persia. Persia is the modern day Iran and Iraq, okay? Just in case you don't know where that is. So when they talk about Babylon, they talk about Iraq. Part of Iraq is Persian. Some people still refer to themselves as Persian because that kingdom is now gone, it's been subsumed into Iraq, but they still refer to themselves as Persian. So Persia, the prince of Persia was the principality, the demon that was set up to control Persia. Everybody say amen. Are you with me? So understand this, that there is, over every area, there is a territorial demon. Oh, help me, Lord. Over every area, over St. Albans, there is a territorial demon. It's a demon that stands over this city and says, this is mine. And says that only certain things that's going to be allowed in this city. Only certain things that's going to go on in this city. Now, the princes, from what we read in the scripture, had to be fallen angels. Because he said that the angel was buffeting. How could a man withstand an angel for 21 days? He couldn't. It had to be another angel, a fallen angel. So understand this, understand territories and powers and hierarchies in heaven. So, so here it is, uh, uh, he's, he, the, the prayer has been given, the answer has been sent, but the, the, the messenger, the angel messenger that was coming with the message was buffeted. He was stopped, he was pushed, he was, he, he was fighting with this prince of Persia that sat over the area of Persia and he said anything that goes on in Persia has to come through me. Have you ever been in a situation where you have gatekeepers? You have gatekeepers at work. Oh help me yeah. You have gatekeepers uh, wherever you go in the community. You have gatekeepers. You want to get into the council there's gatekeepers. There are people there who's just blocking your way. They stand there uh, under that doorman. They stand there and they're blocking your way. There's a gatekeeper over your marriage right now trying to block you from having the marriage you want but I bind it in the name of Jesus. There are gatekeepers standing over your promotion in your job but I bind it in the name of Jesus and tell them every gatekeeper, every demon, every principality, every power has to lose themselves in front of the children of God. Somebody say amen. So the prince of Persia, the prince of Persia is standing and the angel says I have been buffeted by this prince of Persia for 21 days. That's why the message never got through to you. I wonder church, is there anything that goes on, is there any correlation Minister Ben between the fact that Daniel was praying for 21 days and the answer comes to him in 21 days. I, I wonder church if there was anything in prayer, if there's anything in a repeated prayer where you think that you should you pray once and leave it alone. Some people tell you that you should only pray once and that if you pray twice the same thing, you haven't got faith. That is a lie. You pray until it happens. Uh, the, 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 the task here, the test here, is God says, will you keep praying if you don't get it? So what he is doing, and I'm getting ready to finish now, what he is doing when you don't hear from God, when God doesn't speak to you, he doesn't want you to give up. He wants you to keep praying. He wants you to keep casting. He wants you to keep seeking his face. Because I came here to tell you that there is no coincidence between the fact that Daniel was praying for 21 days and the angel was held up for 21 days. But I wonder if Daniel had stopped at 10 days, if he had stopped at 15 days, if he had stopped at 20 days, would he have got his response? No, but he kept praying. So I came here to tell you, what do you do when God doesn't speak? You keep praying, you keep fasting, you keep serving, you keep pushing. I don't care if it takes you a month, I don't care if it takes you a quarter, I 
trust that he's still working it out for you. Deepen your relationship with God. Seek godly counsel. And watch how God comes through for you. Let me just speak because this connects to your faith. When God doesn't speak, it connects to your faith. So let me let me just give you this. I've said this. When the three Hebrew boys were faced with the fiery furnace, this is the level of their faith. They said, Our Lord is able to deliver us from the fiery furnace. That's number one. Believe God that He is able to deliver. The second level of faith is even if He does not, even if He chooses not to deliver us, we still will not bow. That's the second level of faith. The first level is I know God can deliver me. The second level is if He chooses not to deliver me, I still will not bow. That's a level of faith. Hebrews 12. Is the hall of faith for believers. It says that some of them died in faith, believing, having not received the promise. Did you hear what I said? They died in faith, believing, having not received the promise. Ooh. We're going to grow up today. We're going to grow up. What do you do when God stops speaking? Pray. If you need prayer, come to the front. If you need prayer, come to the front. If you're going through a situation, if you need prayer, come. Just come. Just come. We're ready to pray with you. After you've done all you can, 